overall goal today is to use a Raspberry Pi Zero W for wireless communication uh, and a camera interface um, to detect a person and draw boxes around them so you have a video stream that can actually detect a person and act as an MQTT camera for home assistant. So the idea is to use this particular Pi connected uh, to a camera using the CSI interface, a OTG cable connecting to uh, Movidius uh, neural compute stick and um, every time it actually uh, processes and sees a person, draws a box and sends an image to a MQTT server. MQTT server is a mosquito server in my case. MQTT is not uh, discriminating uh, any kind of data in the sense uh, you can send JPEG data directly to MQTT and it's going to be stored and uh, processed uh, for um, any client that asks, asks for that particular topic. So in our case we're going to use Home Assistant and configure an MQTT camera that can subscribe to that particular topic and get the video stream out of uh, the Raspberry Pi W. So the total cost of this, uh, let me break it down. So the most expensive part is the Movidius Neural uh, Compute Stick, which is around $80. Um, the Raspberry Pi is $5. The case is another 5 The camera along with uh, the ribbon cable is $24. Um, the SD card is another 6 uh, OTG cable is $1. And the charger and a uh, good USB cable is around $5. Again, if you are hosting an MQTT server on Raspberry Pi 3, that's a minimum of another $35 plus the SD card and the power supply and stuff like that. So a total of $161 the cost of this particular project. So to use the Intel Movidius SDK, um, so you can do two things. You can use the stick to actually train your data. Um, so you can use um, various methods to do that. And for that, you probably require Ubuntu or a virtual machine. Um, but um, we are not going to do that. So for that, we require a computer. Um, dedicated to just doing this and you can't do it on a Raspberry Pi. So what we're going to do is just uh, compile the API interface and use a pre-compiled uh, training uh, neural network and use that to actually um, send that data, whatever data we are receiving to the neural stick. It computes um, based on what we give as an input and gives us the desired output. So the first step in installing this SDK is just issue this command. I'm going to leave the links below. Um, here there are a whole bunch of libraries that it installs. So I would say start fresh, start from Raspbian or a noobs version of Raspberry Pi and then go ahead and enable your camera and then install uh, all these uh, libraries. It takes around uh, 10 to 20 minutes and then um, go to your home folder and clone the SDK uh, provided by Movidius. So once you clone this, this takes another two minutes or so. You go into this particular directory, go to um, ncsdk and uh, api src and type make. This takes another minute or so and make install is instantaneous so what this does is it installs the API for the SDK so that you can use this particular neural compute stick so how do we going to test that is actually uh, go to the home folder clone the NC app zoo app zoo is just the name that they give for a whole bunch of apps that you can run using this particular stick um, then go into this particular folder go to NC app zoo apps and hello ncspy and if you run python3 hello underscore ncspy you should get this particular response it should go and connect to this particular uh, neural stick and then it should say goodbye so this means that the stick is working so uh, once you confirm this has happened, you can start using this to do our image classification. So next thing is actually choosing image classifier algorithm, the whole bunch of algorithms that have been developed. So why I'm using a mobile SSD or YOLO V2 is actually because these have a person that have been uh, classified as one of their classifiers and uh, you get an accuracy of somewhere around 70 to 80 percent and uses um, somewhere around seven to eight gigaflops of compute uh, stick computation power so basically this is a compromise so you don't want to go and use something that requires way too much computation and have almost the same kind of accuracy so basically we're just going to use mobile SSD and YOLO v2
So there are two different approaches. So I have created um, this particular GitHub library. So I call this the PyCharm Evadius. So you can clone it using this particular command. There are two approaches. The first approach is using imutils, PyCamera, and Pillow. And then uh, you can use OpenCV. Uh, in our case, we're going to use OpenCV3. Um, so here, um, this uses the YOLO v2 algorithm. This uses a mobile SSD. So the comparison between that is this has a much lower uh, CPU overhead. So this is around 42%. And the average CPU overhead is around 70% for this case. And for mobile SSD, I'm getting uh, FPS on a Raspberry Pi W at around 1.39 to 1 1.4 uh, frames per second that you can process and draw diagrams around each uh, classified object that it has identified and uh, YOLO v2 also um, is respectively giving a 0.8 frames per second but uh, when you do the comparison you will see that uh, both of them are kind of giving the same kind of information so here what we do is uh, use image utils by camera and pillow so this is based on one of the app examples and NC app zoo so you can go and check that out so it's, a, it's basically based on the security cam um, but here what we do is actually uh, make some modifications so it runs a little more efficiently and what we require is actually uh, send this particular stream to MQTT. So basically, you need to go set up your MQTT server port and the topic to which it's going to uh, publish the picture. So on our MQTT camera, you will see that uh, it detects a person quite efficiently. The frame rate is around 1.3 to 1.4. You see I me walking, and that's my dog. And this particular mobile SSD um, algorithm has uh, was not trained with dog as one of the um, outputs. So basically, it's not able to identify identify a dog uh, but uh, you know when I just walk by it identify person with a much higher efficiency uh, with a frame rate of 1.5 or so the other way to use is uh, to use OpenCV3 so compiling and installing OpenCV3 on a Pi 3 takes around 50 minutes but when you want to do this on a Pi 0 uh, it takes around 55 hours so um, this is a much simpler way to do it all you have to do is someone has already compiled all the APKs that requires installing so you just go and install this I'm going to leave the links below uh, here is a, a website through which this particular um, person has actually created these libraries that you can go and install um, so here you first add source to your list of APT so here once you do that you update your APT then you install this particular Python 3 open CV and then um, you can open and Python and confirm that you have installed um, the version 3.2 so remember that every time you hit import it takes around 30 seconds to start up but anyway so as long as uh, you have done this um, you will have OpenCV3 installed so what I found out uh, after a few weeks is that you need to actually um, use this uh, v4l2 so this particular uh, driver need to be enabled for this library to work so for this OpenCV to work you have to enable this and that can be enabled by hitting uh, sudo mod pro bcm 2835 v4l2 okay so once you do that and then you run whatever the script um, the OpenCV will work properly so again this is based on a C wrapper developed by this particular user you see that this is classified that it has a chair so I actually moved a chair and you can see uh, it uh, being able to identify me the chair and it also has a classification for dog again here the script is available uh, in my um, github uh, page where you have to specify your uh, mqtt server ip port and topic as well and um, here we get a respectable um, frame rate of around 0.76 frames per second so here i walk my dog and you will see that uh, uh, it will slowly identify me as well as my dog so there you go and there you go so so basically um, these are two different ways through which you can actually use um, machine learning uh, to um, use that to actually detect a person in a live video stream.